Hello and welcome to Radiology Doodles. We will be starting interesting case series from now. And the first case will be Groove Pancreatitis for today. My name is Dr. Aishwarya, MD Radiology from MAMC, New Delhi. Let's start with our case and uh, scrolling from up, we can see the lungs. And as we go down, we can see here is the liver and here is the spleen. This is taken in the portal venous phase and there is oral contrast in the stomach. As we move down, we begin to see the pancreas here. And uh, now we can see the tail and the body of the pancreas. Here is the tail of the pancreas and this is the rest of the body of the pancreas. Head will be lower down. This is the gallbladder. Now we are moving down and uh, following the stomach we can see the pyloric region of the stomach and first part of the duodenum. Now we can see the head of the pancreas here. This is the head of the pancreas and this is the second part of the duodenum. Between these two we can see a sheet like soft tissue density which is present which is not enhancing on the venous phase. And, uh, this is the opacity and as we move down we can see some cystic changes which are present in the pancreatic duodenal groove and little in the head of pancreas. There is associated wall thickening involving medial wall of the duodenum. There can be cystic changes in duodenal wall also. As we move down we can see there is surrounding mesenteric fat stranding and some heterogeneity around the pancreatic duodenal groove. And even the mesentery lower down. Now this opacity in pancreatic duodenal groove is best seen on coronal images. Here we see the head of the pancreas and the rest of the pancreas, the main pancreatic duct. Going back, we can see those cystic changes which I showed in the axial sections. This is the head of the pancreas. This is the second part of the duodenum. <coughs> we can see the wall thickening. Uh, I'll show it better. As we move back, we can see the medial wall thickening involving the duodenum. And between the head of pancreas and the duodenum, we can see that curvilinear sheet-like soft tissue density. And as we move back, we can see the fat stranding. Here also we can see the paraduodenal fat stranding. And uh, there are some lymph nodes in the paraiotic location surrounding the pancreas. Okay, now that we have seen the case of group pancreatitis, let's discuss the etiology of groove pancreatitis. This is the duodenum pancreas, the main pancreatic duct, the accessory pancreatic duct, second part of the duodenum. Cause can be due to any of these structures. First there can be obstruction of the minor papilla or the accessory pancreatic duct leading to pent up secretions. There can be increased pancreatic secretions due to consumption of alcohol or due to smoking. This is the second theory. And the third theory is the Brunner's glands present in duodenal mucosa can undergo hyperplasia and there can be stasis of pancreatic secretions due to the hyperplasia. The fourth theory is a heterotrophic pancreas that is ectopic pancreas along with the normal pancreas and the ectopic pancreas present in the duodenum. The fifth theory is peptic ulcer disease. Groove pancreatitis seen in middle-aged males with alcoholism. Coming to the clinical presentation, they can present in acute form with pain, nausea, vomiting or acute gastric outlet obstruction or they can present as a chronic form leading to jaundice because of common bile duct obstruction and weight loss. Biochemical markers in these cases unfortunately are not very helpful 
the enzymes amylase and lipase which are raised in pancreatitis can be normal in such cases or can be minimally elevated bilirubin and alp can be raised in chronic forms with cbd obstruction coming to types of groove pancreatitis there is the pure form which i showed the case previously occurs only in pancreaticoduodenal groove ranging from ill defined fat stranding to sheet like soft tissue in pd groove then there is the segmental form which involves pancreaticoduodenal groove also extending to head of the pancreas this can present like mass like enlargement of head of pancreas now the both forms will not have retroperitoneal inflammatory features unlike conventional pancreatitis coming to imaging findings we discussed the pure form which is sheet like opacity on ct it shows delayed enhancement on mri tissue in the pancreaticoduodenal groove is hypointense on t1 and on t2 it is variable depending on the amount of fibrous tissue in this case it's hyperintense it also shows delayed enhancement next the segmental form segmental form on ct shows involvement of pancreaticoduodenal groove and head of the pancreas shows mass like enlargement of head of the pancreas and shows variable intensity on mri sequences t1 t2 mrcp can be done in cases of bile duct complications next to the most important part that is differential diagnosis of groove pancreatitis first is the pancreatic adenocarcinoma it's very difficult to differentiate both on imaging itself pancreatic adenocarcinoma cystic changes are rare in this retroperitoneal infiltration is more common in adenocarcinoma they encase the vasculature more commonly and duodenal wall thickening is not so much associated with pancreatic adenocarcinoma they appear as homogeneously hypodense lesions next is the duodenal adenocarcinoma which can either present as a focal mass or as a wall thickening of duodenum and use coronal reformats to localize the lesion to its origin then we have to differentiate groove pancreatitis from conventional pancreatitis with secondary involvement of the pancreatic duodenal groove the inflammatory features in retroperitoneum like in the areas of perinephric location and paraaortic location are more common in conventional pancreatitis it also involves entire or substantial portion of pancreas associated with peripancreatic fluid thank you for watching and if you want videos on any topics or radiology physics please comment below please share our videos and subscribe to our channel radiology doodles